Hi everyone, Becky here. I hope you're all well. Um, so this is my new music discovery video and today we are going to look at the wonderful Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. Follow me! I, for, for me, uh, the ethos for the, for the word go is just peace, love, positivity, get get the crowd as involved as possible in what we are doing. Uh, it should be, I suppose, <laughs> when someone comes to our gig or if they're involved with something we do, they should feel a part of that as much as the band and that, that's the overall kind of, I suppose, idea. Have, having fun with a social conscience as well uh, are two really important things that overall people need to be entertained and, and have fun with it. From from when I came into the band, like, before, I, before I officially got on stage for the first time, actually coincidentally with a, with a rubber chicken. <laughs> rubber chicken was my first prop on stage in Pivo Pivo on a Thursday night. Well, an actor pal of mine in the early days before I was in the band described the band as musical theatre and like, we were all sort of genres for like the elements that were trying to be like fused together were I suppose kind of like a wee, maybe like quite psychedelic yellow submarine with maybe like the mighty bush um, mixed in with a bit of Monty Python and that kind of thing so that, that naturally appealed to my very serial love of comedy as well. Uh, um, I was very uh, politically and activist active. Uh, that that for me was where I was devoting most of my free time. But then when John said to me, "Here, grab that chicken and just get up on stage," but and I said, <laughs> "Grab that chicken and get on stage and do what? I just dance about with that chicken and and that that was it." So. Um, um, I, I realised that we had a platform and, and, and if you're, a, you're an artist or a musician and you have a platform then in my opinion you should be using that platform and your voice for good. So we continued from day one from me being in the band and even before I did like, to, to sort of like, fuse that aspect where like, as our gigs got bigger we would we would let like Greenpeace and Refugee J and Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament have stalls at our gigs and then the Yellow Movement became a, a, a wider community-led um, project where we would be putting on regular fundraising gigs in both Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it's interesting, there's lot, lots of different musical tastes in the band, so like, uh, some of the girls, like Snoops, who play saxophone, she she absolutely loved the Spice Girls and just that whole attitude, that girl power thing. But then she's all into, so into jazz and soul and uh, DJ Five, who I first met at Teen the Park again through David. He he's like a house music DJ, but he plays he's absolute massive eclectic taste for hip hop to you know house music and. Funk and soul, and definitely. I think like Chris, he he's an a Radiohead, but then Chris, who Chris writes a lot of the songs, he'll go away and he's really will study a genre. Like Big Craig, who I've been in bands with since like, sixteen, like playing in his garage, and Roddy, who plays percussion, 
Uh, they guys have always been massive musical influences on, on me. Uh, I, I only liked the Beatles, Nirvana and the Doors. Roddy and Craig got me into like, you know, the Black Crows and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and all sorts of new bands like Super Furry Animals. And then we went through that total dance music phase when we moved out of there and we're going to the Archies and the Sub Club Club. Uh, and it would be like, you know, Lauren Garney and Fatboy Slam and I loved Big Beat and uh, the Chemical Brothers, the Prodigy, all, all of they guys. Uh, so I, I, it's, it's a total fusion and I got the, I always wanted like, to have, as well as live drumming, that kind of dance beat just because it gives it the extra kind of lift and to have a horn section as well in our horn section. Most of them still do play with Sambia Bamba as well, so there's there's lots of different influences kind of running through it, but... Well, actually, the, 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 scree the three key words, three key, three, three key C's, collective community and communication, and in terms of the collective, what we we are a collective on stage. There aren't many bands over the years we've oscillated from having what sixteen on stage to now we've been we've been eleven for a wee while um, in the sort of the, the core band. But then we think it's great that wherever you go, you end up having representation from musicians from that area on your song. These are not the drugs you're looking for because we have, as we were discussing, the the middle eight where we pass over the stage the, to um, MCs or other singers who might just be happen to uh, be at the festival and more often than not look from that area. So um, the, the collective itself becomes the collective that's there and the collective for us doesn't end where the stage ends. The collective for us is the unity that, that we create in the space where everybody comes together where you're just there to celebrate peace, love and music. So you get this beautiful symbiosis where we do all become one and then when, when you can create that, wherever it might be, East Kilbride Arts Centre, uh, the Bungalow in Paisley, the um, Zandari Fest in Seoul, the, the demilitarised zone between North and South Korea, England, Wales, Ireland, wherever it might be, you, 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 can, you can again just use your platform to create that community through your music, and it's when it, when when all those when all those uh, different pieces coalesce and come together, it's it's just it's a beautiful and amazing thing, and, and that is the power of music, and that's why we love it so much. Um, a, a key thing would be, I would say, is just like from the start, make sure you're having fun with it. Like you need right. to keep that element in there to, to be enjoying it because it's in many ways it, a lot of the time if what you do behind the scenes is a thankless task um, and then it's it's the focus and knowing that everything leads up to you getting on stage and having that one hour's performance and then what like, being a part of what like, and then what like, it's, it's it's not by design it's just it's just who we are but Every gig that we play at, we will be out the front in the crowd watching the support acts, who, who we don't even really like to call support acts, like they're our special guests. We, we're totally enjoying our own gigs before we even get on stage. Um, so it's that, it's, it's, it's just trying to keep the positives and have all your touch points around how you're engaging with the, the various different things that you need to do to form a band, have fun when you're jamming, um, get out there, get your word out, go out, get out on stage, meet, meet the people, become pals with the people who are coming to see you, like at all. Just just don't see yourself as being separate from it because whether you like it or not, you'll you'll become a band or an artist and then you'll already be like you'll instantly be, become a part of the wider music ecosystem, for want of a better word. And well, any ecosystem is only as strong as its weakest part, and, and you are a part of that, so you have a role to play, and you, you have a voice, 
and you have a contribution to make. And if you're a musician, you have songs inside you that need to, that should be written and should be sung. And uh, uh, and it's just about getting getting that out there and understanding that and accepting that, that you are a part of that and, and embracing it. Thank you.